Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to Getting Sketchy, where we try to create a drawing in a defined amount of time. Now this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to spend 30 minutes today drawing gesture drawings. Now a gesture drawing is really can be uh, a quick loose sketch of anything, but most circumstances we're referring to drawing the human figure and that's what we're going to be doing here with this gesture drawing exercise. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool um, from a website on the internet, a wonderful tool. And we're going to time ourselves, we're going to create uh, six different gesture drawings within 30 minutes. So we're going to spend just five minutes on each one of the gesture drawings. Now, a gesture drawing is loose. It's meant to be created quickly. Um, and the whole point is basically to practice our observational skills and uh, try to get the proportions of the figure correct and um, try to get the pose of the figure that we're drawing as correct as possible. Now, of course, this this form of practice is going to improve your observational skills and improve your drawing as a result of that. So that's why we do this. Remember, daily practice is important for improving your drawing skills. So if you want to improve at drawing, you have to practice it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that website that I mentioned and then we'll dive right into this exercise. So here's a look at the website. This is line-of-action.com and it's a wonderful tool that they have created here. This tool will allow us to set some parameters before we begin this exercise. We can choose to draw nude models or covered models. It's completely up to you. Um, we're going to be drawing only covered models and uh, you can include both female or male models uh, or you can choose one or the other depending on what you want to do here. And you can also choose the type of session that you'd like uh, to create. You can, you can have a session where all the exercises are the same length, which is what we're going to be working with, or you can work with a class mode where you have some shorter drawings at the beginning and then some longer drawings towards the end of the process, and that is very similar to a traditional figure drawing class. So the time interval that we're going to be working with is five minutes here, so we'll go ahead and set our parameters and then we'll get right into this. So we're going to be working only with uh, covered models or clothed models. We'll work with both males and females, and of course we want all of our drawings to be the same length, the same amount of time, and our time interval is going to be five minutes, and then we'll just click the Get Drawing button, and then we'll get started. Now, one quick thing that I didn't mention here before we actually get into the drawing process are the materials that I'm going to be using here because they're not just traditional drawing materials. I'm going to be using uh, a drawing pen here. These are made by Stiedler. This is uh, the size of the pen I'm going to be using is a point two. So it's not a small pen, but it's also not the biggest one that they manufacture. The reason why I'm going to work with ink pen here is because I want to make sure that I'm not spending time erasing or trying to refine my drawing. I want my lines to be deliberate and uh, drawing with an ink pen helps to in ensure that that is the case. Now you're free to use any uh, drawing medium that you wish of course. And I'm going to be working on Canson hot press watercolor paper because I'm going to apply a bit of watercolor just to quickly define some of the values just to make the gesture drawings appear a little bit more interesting. So a little added element here just to make this process a little bit more interesting and a little bit more challenging as well. But like I said you're free to use any medium that you wish. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the exercise. All right, here's a look at our first subject. So we'll go ahead and dive right into this one. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try to visually measure where the subject is going to fit on the picture plane. So I'm just going to bring a line down, uh, basically indicating the spine and then the lower part of the body coming across here and then the leg coming forward. And that's just going to help me to ensure that I get the entire figure on the picture playing here. And then I'll go back up to the top and start basically constructing uh, somewhat of a stick figure here. I know that the head is up here. The head is tight, slightly tilted to the left. So I'm going to draw a few lines that indicate the eyes, the nose and the mouth. And uh, then go ahead and start filling in the bulk of the form here, trying to use loose lines and trying to think about the foreshortening that happens here. There is some foreshortening happening with this figure. Parts of the figure, of course, come towards the viewer. We've got this arm that comes down and then comes right back up like this. And then I'm just gonna draw a quick shape for the hands and the fingers here. 
looks like he might be holding something in his hand. Uh, from the angle that I'm seeing here on my screen, it's a little bit hard to see some of the darker details on here. Um, just because of the way I've got things set up here. We'll draw a little bit of the muscles there in the arm, just a quick indication. And then of course, what little bit we can see of the body on the opposite side and then the arm coming out uh, the back side here. And this arm is very close to coming out of the back side of the head. So um, we can kind of make comparisons there. And of course, the little bit of hands that show there. So I'm trying to draw quickly here and uh, keep things loose. So I'm drawing with lots of different lines and I'm trying to draw for the most part with uh, my elbow and my shoulder if possible. Although this medium that I'm working with, the ink doesn't really um, lend itself to drawing from the shoulder as much as other mediums like charcoal and graphite, of course, that we still wanna stay as loose as possible. Then down towards the lower part of the legs, we'll give a quick indication of just the bottom part of the leg and uh, a little bit of the muscle structure there, not too much. And then this part of the bottom part of the leg backs back in. <clears throat> and then of course the foot over here and just a simple shape will do right there. So now we've got the basic structure of the figure in place. We're gonna add just a little bit of watercolor just to uh, create a little bit of an indication of some value. So I'm gonna do use burnt umber for this. And again, I'm gonna work as quickly as I possibly can. I'm just gonna look at where the light source is coming from and where the shadowed areas are. And for the most part, the light source is originating from the right side so that's casting a lot of shadows on the left side of the figure so this doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that we're just practicing here recognizing value relationships and of course practicing a little bit of uh, the proportional things that we need to work out whenever we create a drawing of a figure the more that you practice with gesture drawing, and it can be anywhere, you can do this anywhere, at any time. If you bring a little sketchbook around with you, of course you can draw people wherever you may be, as long as there are people there. Um, I'm sure some people will think you're strange, but that's okay. <laughs> and I have no idea how much more time we have on this particular one. I would say our time is probably beginning to run out here. Go back and make some of the values a little bit darker, maybe create a little bit more of a transition in areas. And of course, I'm using a pen that has waterproof ink in it. That's how I can go right over the top of these ink applications and uh, not have any bleeding or anything occur there. We'll put a little indication of shadow underneath the figure. Just using this one color. And as soon as it changes, we'll be ready to bring another sheet of paper in here because it will change automatically. Remember, our time limit is only five minutes. And if you find that five minutes isn't long enough for you, you can always make adjustments and make it a little bit longer. But I definitely recommend starting out with very quick, short exercises to begin with here. And five minutes is somewhere in the middle. And uh, my, in my figure drawing classes in college, we would start with uh, one minute or even 30 second drawings. Okay, so there's our first one now. Uh, we've switched over. It's time for, it looks like, uh, maybe a samurai warrior. So I will, don't want to exit. I don't want to exit. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> trying to get another sheet of paper here and uh, it's trying to make me exit. So we lost a little bit of time here, but that's okay get the paper lined up here and again I'm gonna start with a uh, loose sketch here of the line from the top of the head to the bottom so this figure kind of has a little bit of curve that comes down and then of course it's hard to see what's happening with the legs I'm kind of envisioning where the legs would be trying to think about that overall structure and where those legs might be found underneath this particular outfit. 
and then we can go back and uh, start adding some of the details again I'm gonna start kind of with a stick figure here drawing a loose indication of the head I'm kind of getting a line where the shoulder is and then of course we've got one arm that's kind of coming up from the side of the shoulder over here again trying to keep my arm moving as much as I possibly can and then the hand up here Again, just a simple shape for the hand uh, maybe a, a, an indication of the eyes and the mouth shoulder kind of overlaps that then the hand behind the head here very close up here and in this particular case we probably need to include the prop that this person is holding this ridiculous sword well of course it's not probably ridiculous <laughs> but it's uh, a really long sword all right now we're, we're gonna in this case we're gonna have some indication of the clothing itself this person is wearing an interesting outfit here so uh, we'll bring this over and just thinking about the folds and the overall structure of the clothing here this is important as well And you can see that slant that happens. There's definitely a, a change here as the clothes go backwards and the weight of the body is positioned on that. Uh, I guess it would be the right foot, but it's on the left side of the image here. And then we'll just bring that foot down again, just drawing basic shapes here. I'm going to give a, a little bit of an indication of some of the darker value using the pen before we go to the watercolor here. And remember, we're not striving for perfection here, clearly, because this is a timed drawing. <laughs> um, you know, if you were wanting to make sure all of the proportions were absolutely accurate, you could start with a looser sketch like this and then, of course, make refinements. All right, let's switch over to the watercolor and quickly pick up some burnt umber here. And again, just concentrating mostly on the darker values. Most of the, the bottom part down here is dark mainly because of just the color color of the clothing but also because of some of the folds and things that happen down here And in this case, of course, our light source is originating again from the uh, right side here. So that's putting most of the shadows on the left side of the figure. We can see that on the, on the head up there. And we've already switched. So we'll go ahead and put a little bit of shadow underneath this one. Then I'm actually going to pause this one for a second until we're ready because that's such an interesting pose there. So I'm going to make just a couple more refinements to this, uh, this sketch here. I don't know if this would be considered cheating or not, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no cheating in art, right?
All right, now I think we're ready to move on to the next one so we can unpause things. So let me go ahead and get the paper ready here. All right, we'll go ahead and unpause it now. And uh, this one's gonna be a real challenge here. So uh, we'll, again, we're gonna start with a line from the top of the head down to the bottom of the feet. And again, we've got some major, some real serious foreshortening happening here. Uh, the subject is pointing the, the gun towards us here. I don't know how much of the gun we're gonna actually include here, but uh, so this is the arm coming down, and then we've got the head tilted to the side here. And I'm just gonna try to get a, capture a little bit of that curvature of the head here, maybe the bottom of the chin. And then of course the hair flying off here. Back of the shoulder. And then the other arm coming down here. And this back arm actually comes down further than the hand there in the foreground. So just making some comparisons between uh, the different hand or the, the hands uh, as we're placing them on the paper. This arm or this leg here comes out to quite a diagonal. And we've got the knee, the leg comes down and look at how huge that foot is. <laughs> and this is only because of the foreshortening that happens here. And that probably actually isn't even large enough there. meaning it could be a lot larger. All right, we'll go ahead and bring the back leg around here. Now remember, these don't have to be perfect at all. In fact, uh, you shouldn't really obsess on making these types of drawings perfect. Um, this is just an exercise and uh, you just want to practice getting loose, staying loose, and, and trying to capture the proportions of the figure as best as you possibly can in the amount of time that you have. And of course, also try to capture the movement of the subject if the subject is, in, is moving. We've definitely had some challenging subjects here. Of course, these are all pulled out randomly. Let's see if we can't get some watercolor on this one as quickly as possible. Lots of darks happening here. In fact, there's so many darks, some, it's hard to tell what's happening in some of the areas on here. Um, and darken on the eyes, the mouth. And uh, again, the light source is coming from the right side. And that is creating areas of shadow on the left side. See that whole arm back there is mostly in shadow. We probably could have made that right leg a little bit larger. Now I'm just using burnt umber for this. You can use any color that you want. You might, some people might like to use a blue or something like that. Um, if you decide to go this approach, this approach, this definitely makes the challenge a little bit higher uh, because of course, or makes it a little bit more of a challenge, I should say, because of course you need to think about the watercolor applications, even though they're quick and loose. And 
All right, I see that we've changed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this one <laughs> and uh, give, me, give myself a second just to go ahead and put some of these last finishing touches on this sketch. All right, I guess we'll move on to our next one. I'm gonna get another sheet of paper. All right, so we've done three of these and we've got three more to go um, to finish our 30 minute exercise. Of course, this video is gonna be a little bit longer than 30 minutes, but uh, hopefully you're working alongside of me and uh, hopefully enjoying this process. So let's go ahead and start the timer back again. So again, I'm gonna start with a uh, line from uh, what I perceive to be the top of the head down to the bottom of where the feet are going to be located and that just helps me get a good indication of where I need to place the shoulder line where I need to place the waistline and then from there we can start building out uh, things like the head the neck the shoulders and uh, if, if a stick figure helps you and by all means draw it. I kind of like to, to draw somewhat of a stick figure. Um, and then basic shapes for things like the hands and uh, all the other details like the feet and so on. This subject is carrying something, so we probably need to include a little bit of an indication of that thing. <laughs> um, because of course that affects the way the figure is standing there in space. Exaggerate the hand coming down maybe a little bit. And let's zoom in a little bit closer here. Lots of folds and things happening here. We'll give a quick indication of that happening here with some looser marks. A little bit of a diagonal happening here uh, with these marks, these flowing marks that kind of make their way down. And again, this person is wearing lots of clothes here. Well, maybe not lots of clothes, but uh, it's taken up a lot of the bottom part of the picture plane. Draw a couple of shapes for the feet here. Again, not perfect here. We're not trying, we're not striving for perfection. This is, should be a loose sketch. This is all about practice. And, you know, if you're, if you're not practicing and you're wondering why your drawings aren't improving, well, there's your there's your answer um I, there's a lot of people who who think that there's just some secret there's some magic bullet uh, for example when it comes to drawing well and once they know that secret all of a sudden they're going to be able to draw well and that's just not how it works uh, drawing well is a combination of practice and knowledge um, and you have to you have to learn concepts and then you have to practice them in order to improve your drawing and uh, you know creating these looser sketches like this really play a, a, a vital role in improving your overall drawing abilities even though these drawings are you know they're not refined they're not perfect by any means uh, it's still helpful all right, we're gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of watercolor here. And again, the light source is coming from the right side here. So we're gonna see most of the darker values on the left side. We'll give a few indications of some of the wrinkles here and there. Allow those to flow in a similar way that we see them flowing here in the image. 
most of this arm back here is in shadow and of course we can add the little frilly stuff coming out of that container a little bit of cast shadow underneath like we've changed so we'll put a pause on this one and just put a few finishing touches on our next gesture here all right we'll move on to our next one all right so we're ready for our next challenge here and uh, this is again another challenging positioning of the figure so we'll go ahead and dive into this one um, again i'm going to kind of think about where the positioning is going to be where the head's going to be and where the feet are going to be and then i'm going to try to figure fit the whole figure into this position now this in this case our figure is kind of coming at an angle over here and, and then Kind of bending around this way and we've got one leg that appears to come up like this just slightly underneath the head and then back down right here and this is where we would expect to see the foot and then the other leg is coming down and uh, intersecting right there and then making its way down right here so this is basically where we're going to try to position the figure. So now we'll go ahead and go back in and address the hair. because so we're not seeing much of the face here. And then the shoulder kind of comes back or the back of the body. Here's the shoulder. Then again, a little bit of foreshortening happening here with this hand. And I believe this is the same model that we had before. But instead, in, instead of looking right at us, she's been over here. All right, so there's a hand. So we're basically bonding the figure with lots of different lines. So it's not necessarily a process where one line is the perfect line, and that'll never usually happen. <laughs> That'll usually never happen in any drawing that you create, especially a loose, quick gestural sketch. So that's why it's a good idea sometimes to make lots of lines. And it's definitely more of a challenge here working with ink than it would be with a graphite pencil or charcoal or something like that, where you can create a little bit more uh, variety just by adjusting the amount of pressure that you place on the pencil. second foot comes down like this and then we can go ahead and fill in the shape of the rest of the clothing down here Put some indication of some of the darker values here before we go back to the paint. All right, now we'll grab a bit of watercolor. And here our light source again is coming from the right 
um, which means that most of our shadowed areas are going to exist on the left side. We're also going to have some shadow underneath, some uh, poor shadow underneath some of the areas. For example, underneath the face on the chest here, we have some darker values. All right, we'll have a little bit of cast shadow underneath and uh, just a little indication of shadow on the leg here. And it's changed on us here. I think we're gonna we're gonna skip this one here. All right, now we're ready to move on to our next one. All right, now we'll tackle our, our last subject here. And again, another challenge. Of course, all of these are, are fairly challenging. We're gonna start again with a line from the head to the feet and try to think about um, basically, again, the posture of the figure. And once we've got a line from the head to the feet, ensuring that we're going to get the entire figure on the picture plane, then we can go back. I'm going to look at the shoulder line here, and you can see the shoulder line's at a little bit of a diagonal, and the waistline is at a little bit of a different diagonal there. So just planning out these little things helps a, a little bit about uh, you know ensuring that you're getting the, the correct posture or something similar to the posture of the subject that you're you're observing here. So. We'll go ahead and put an indication of the eye line, the nose line. So you can see each one of these drawings that we've done here, I've approached things a little bit differently for each one. So there's not necessarily a formula that's gonna work for every uh, figure that you try to draw. Although the approach of drawing a line from the head to the feet, then drawing a line for the shoulders, a line for the waist, and then creating a stick figure really helps a lot, uh, especially if you're brand new and uh, brand new to drawing and figure drawing specifically, and you're really unsure how to approach figure drawing. Sometimes it, it is helpful to approach things in that way. But you know, there are circumstances where sometimes you might want to look at the overall form of each section of the body, like uh, the, the thickness of the legs, for example. And um, instead of drawing a a line for each section of the body, like the lines and the arms and the forearms and so on, you can concentrate on the forms like I'm doing here. And instead of drawing a line for the bottom part of the, the legs or the upper part of the legs, I drew a shape. And that's what I'm gonna do over here as well. And another approach you can take is just to fill in these shapes with solid lines or solid uh, value, just color it in completely. There's nothing wrong with that either. You're also still using your observational skills and practicing those observational skills. So right, this leg is kind of up at a, it's kind of got an odd posture going on here. 
and the other arm is really not even visible. Give it a loose indication of the hair here. You can see how much foreshortening affects the length that we make different parts of the body here. So, um, you know, this leg is not, the bottom part of this leg is really not that short, but because it's foreshortened, um, that's how it appears to us visually. All right, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer here and uh, just pause this one so that we have enough time to add the watercolor washes. And then I'll quickly add some watercolor. Again, thinking about the areas where the value is the darkest. Of course, we've got this dark sheet that comes across there, so that's a good place to start here. And we'll create a little bit of contrast between the skin tones of the body. And again, we have two light sources in this case. We have a primary light source coming from the right side and then a secondary light source, a weaker light source coming from the left side, but it's still creating um, highlights on that left side of the body. You can see that it's not as strong of a highlight, but there's still highlights there. So that means most of our shadows are kind of going to end up in the middle of the form. You can see this on the thigh here. By using the watercolor with the pen and ink, it really uh, helps you to go in and think about things in a different way the second time you go in. When you're going in with the watercolor, for example, um, just thinking about the values for the most part. And of course, this is still loose, very, very loose, uh, but you're still thinking about the things that you need to think about when you're creating a drawing or a painting. All of this is practice. You can definitely turn um, gesture drawings into finished drawings and paintings if you prefer, but just want you to keep in mind that's not what we're doing here. We're only focusing on practice, loose practice. This is a great exercise, of course, for your sketchbook. And, you know, when you go back through, you see all the areas where you could have improved and made your initial gesture drawing better and that also is going to help you improve as well Oh, I see that other hand. It's kind of coming out about right here, or maybe that's that's part of the sheet, isn't it? <laughs> I'm telling you, from what I'm seeing, it, it's uh, it's hard to see some of those areas of darker value from my setup here. Just continue that sheet down a little bit. All right, uh, so that's our last one for this exercise. Of course, you can do a lot more if you want. You can change the amount of time that you're doing for each gesture sketch, but let's let's look at all of them together. So now that some we've had some time to allow some of these to dry, we get a better idea of what our, our gestures are going to look like here. This was one I did uh, before I started recording this video just to practice the amount of time that I had set up and make sure that five minutes was enough time um, to do the things that I wanted to do. Here was our first gesture sketch, and you can see here now that the watercolor's dried up a little bit, it's an interesting little sketch. Um, then, of course, we uh, created a couple more here. You can take a look at these. 
these now that this has had a little bit of time to dry up and then we moved on to the girl with the uh, the flowy dress and then finally we did this guy here at the end this is the smallest one and I think this is probably the least successful of the ones that we created here but again this is just an exercise it's just meant uh, to help you with your practice to help you improve with your observational skills and of course drawing the human figure or, or painting the human figure is the fastest way to improve your observational skills because the human figure is challenging it's always changing and of course creating gesture drawings is an excellent way uh, to practice so thanks for joining me on this uh, quick look at creating gesture drawings. Of course, we used ink and watercolor, which made the challenge uh, a little bit more difficult. But of course, if we don't challenge ourselves, how can we expect to improve? So uh, draw every day, draw every second that you get. And the more that you draw, the better that you're going to improve. So uh, thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you the very best in your artistic success.